Yo, Dime Magazine, once again, we are in the building. It's your boy, Lenny. Yo, look who we got right here, man. We got some serious powerhouses. Throws one, hits his man. That's Urban Exelum taking off with speed. He's going to go all the way to the end zone. Can you say something about your organization? This organization is lit. Yeah, yes, Come to Chargers Row. Come to Chargers Row, yes ma'am. Family fun football. It's your boy Tex and it's your girl Bailey. We're going to get to know these people, man. Understand why they're here, why they're on the Dime Magazine couch. And all our listeners out there, all of our global listeners, all of our viewers, we just want to say thank you guys so much for tuning into Dime Magazine again. Because this is what it's about, baby. We about to show y'all who they really are and what they're doing. Real talk, man. How y'all doing? Oh, man, it's been an awesome day so far. Yeah. We really enjoyed today. Yeah. And company, uh, we did the draft early for the Turkey Bowl. Mm -hmm. So that was fun. Now let's get to the business side of it. Let's. People want to know who we are. We're here to show that light, to show what we about, the organization, everything like that. Mm -hmm. Now, you already know. You guys, man, you guys not only, right, are a powerhouse, but you guys are a power couple. I told you, not that anybody could just come up here, not just anybody. You know, you have the two here, Text and Bailey. Bailey, like, you have no idea. It's an honor to see you. It's an honor to see both of you guys. Like, to be able to, like, really get into football, semi-pro football, but not only just as fans, right? But right. also being owners. But not only are you guys owners, right? Co-owners, but you guys are two owners of two separate teams. Like, please explain that, Bailey. Like, oh, oh. Go ahead. Well, I'll explain it. So, okay. So basically what we've done is in the past, we've been on this team before and we owned it with Meryl Holiday. So now Meryl kind of gave the keys, but he didn't give it originally to both of us. He gave the keys just to me. So, so wait a minute, power of the woman, power of the women. No, no disrespect, fellas. Don't hate me. <laughs> the keys are to me. So basically, the team is mine, the city is mine, and I'm coming in hot, whether they like it or not. Now, now, what made you? Let, let's let's just go back to your humble beginnings, okay? Like, what made you want to get, like, seriously, get into football? Not only as a fan, but like. Wanting to be an owner, cause that—that's levels to that. I, I can answer that question. Oh, okay. I can interrupt this one. So when Mero asked us to come aboard when we first, when he first started Chargers, he asked me, "Who do you trust?" That's a hard question. I'm a very personal, don't trust a lot of people, but I was like, I trust my girl. I ain't trying to be funny. He was like, "Word, yo, we gonna let somebody deal with money. Somebody who I know who has my back, who has our back. This is the person I trust the most." So we got to teach her up. She knows stuff, but she don't know football stuff. But the ownership, paperwork, everything going to be on point. Let her handle the front office stuff. I just want to handle football. So when she got the keys this time, I'm not a politician. I don't, I don't, I hate to say this like this, but you asked me to be real. I don't kiss ass. I ain't got time for the bullshit. That's more her. I like to be on the football side of it, behind the scenes. This is kind of more her show. So when she got this opportunity, she's a queen. I'm a king. I support my queen. Queen is the biggest piece on the ch chessboard. She protects me too. So this is on her. <laughs> now, now, I'm glad you said that because, again, you guys not only are, again, owners, but you guys are a power couple. Like, these, these guys are married. Like, they, these guys are <laughs> officially, legally married. Like, how did y'all... I actually officially... This is my fiance. We haven't went down to the courthouse. It's going there. It's getting there. It's, get, it's going. He don't Yo. have a choice. It's going there. <laughs> this can be done by next year. It's going there, though. Okay, so now watch this, right? What brought, because you're not from here. You're from Texas, from right? Texas. You're from Boston. Like, how did you, how were you guys able to come in and unite? Now, I got to, this is for you, because you know how they say when the guy says it, the guy's full of shit, but when the girl, when the woman says it, that's when it's taken serious, right? Come on, you got to let us know. Uh, honestly, I, I don't know. It was the accent. <laughs> I 
I don't know what it was. That brother was smooth. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Um, I worked downtown in Fannie Hall. First time I ever met this man. He talked about, let's go out. I'm like, okay, cool. I thought he was just going to go pick me up from the train station, something like that. This man comes in a big black truck. Okay, parks right on the side in the middle of Faneuil Hall where the horses be parked at, opens up my door, tries to pick me up and got me flowers. I was like, oh, they don't do that like that here. Oh. My man, <laughs> my man. See, told y'all not everybody can come up here. That chivalry, chivalry. <laughs> it is not dead if you find the right one. Mm. So then after that, it just ricocheted, it soared. I mean, it was somebody for me I could learn from. Now, don't take it for granted. We always have made our mistakes, but I always like to talk to him. Because if there's somebody I ever want to confide in, if somebody will be like, oh, am I tripping? He going to tell me where I'm right or wrong. Now, whether I accept it is a different <laughs> story. <laughs> but there it is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we like that old couple on, uh, what's that movie? Harlem Nights. Yeah. Fuck you, bitch. You fat motherfucker. She a sweet woman. She a sweet woman. Yeah, 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 yeah. Real fuck. She a sweet woman, but yeah, goddamn. Yeah. You know she means what? Well, Swallow and shut the fuck up. <laughs> I, could, I could tell because both you guys are young, right? But both you guys have. Well, but, no, but I mean, but let, let's keep it 100, right? You guys are young, but you guys have old souls. You guys have old spirits. Yeah, yeah. And you being from the South, you know what I'm saying? Like, right, right. up north, it's a different situation. You have that already given hospitality. You right. already have that mannerism, that right. southern comfort. Is that what they call it? So in the midst of it, I can understand how you have you were able to take the south and the north and come together and make real shit happen. You know what I mean? They say, like they say, opposite of track. So mm -hmm. this situation, mm -hmm. a positive or negative actually came through. She calms me down. I calm her down sometimes. Um, it just works in business. We bounce ideas off of some each other. Like I said, I handle more of the team. This is what we're going to do, stuff like that. But the front office, location, uniforms, all that. Like I said, this is the person who designed the uniforms for the Turkey Bowl. Um Designed a lot of stuff that the Chargers had last year. Going into this year, the new we actually rebranding with new uniforms. So we're trying to do stuff, and you know I'm old school. She's a little new, younger, so she kind of keep up with new school. So we just kind of combining that together and playing off of that stuff a lot of times. That's how we handle certain situations we come into it. You know now, I mean? oh, definitely. I, you know, I, I love your answer, man, because, you know, a lot of, I'm going to be honest with you, a lot of guys can't put that together the way you just did. You know what I mean? So it shows me where your head is. No, I don't know everything, especially being, let's be honest, you know, I ain't from Boston. So when I moved here, I lived in, let's, let's be honest, I lived in other states, Colorado, Houston. I made a name. Shout out to my staff in Colorado. Okay. Shout out to y'all. I made a name for myself there. Mm -hmm. So coming here, it was it was a whole new thing. So when I got here and I got into football, it was I was trying to do stuff and I guess people say, let's be honest, I'm gonna keep it one hundred. I was moving too fast. So I started coaching, I started doing this. Ah, we don't he's not from here. Oh, he shouldn't get disrespect. La la la, this and that, he's not from here. And I just kept doing what I'm doing. So once me and her got together and she saw the vision and saw some things, it was like why we don't do that in Boston? We traveled down to Texas one time, and I remember us going the morning we was leaving. There was a high school practice in Dallas High School at like 7, 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning. These kids are out there running. It's in the middle of, uh, I want to say, what, it was spring football, so June or May, but these kids are out there running, working out. They don't do that in Boston. And I was like, oh, no, nah, this is Texas. They, you know, they got their own shop just for football. Like, it's bigger in Texas, so... Being, when we brought that here, we traveled to Vegas one year, and she got to see how Team Colorado, a select all-star team, practiced Thursday five hours, Friday five hours. She's like, once again, she was like, damn, they don't do that in Boston. So when she seen this, it was like, let's bring this back up here. You know what I'm saying? So when she's given this opportunity, yo, I'm, I got to stand behind her because she's in charge, and this is her. I'm just the football part of it. I don't want to be in front let her handle all that she's got the mayor out to games she's got crowds out to game um like i said the second annual turkey bowl pulled it off the day was amazing with the what thing got over a thousand views already yeah. on the yeah. draft yep. um yeah. that's amazing because we didn't expect that to go like now everybody want to sign up now even though we've been saying this so it's like when you say something you put it out there and put it into tuition into into 
put out in the universe. Put out in the universe, you're gonna get what you get back, and hopefully, we come off enough positive energy, we can start getting that shit back. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. Well, I'm glad you said that because you know, uh, getting to where now, you know, your aspect of your side of the business, you stay in your lane. And how do they say? Behind every strong man, beside every strong man, in front of every strong man is a strong woman. So you know what? Shout out to you. I want to give you your flowers. All y'all ladies out there, take note, man. You know, it ain't always about trying to look good for your man. I mean, that's a plus. But make sure you have the mental piece. That's really important. Real talk. And I'm glad you had mentioned that because now you know going into your side you know you are the one who handles the business side of it you know like you want to give some of your details some of your specifics on what it's like to own and some of your duties of owning a semi-pro team because i know how you about to change oh my god <laughs> that's <Yeah>. dope <laughs> well first and foremost um kind of tagging off of what he just said to go into this answer First and foremost, when I went to Houston, we were getting engaged. <laughs> so upon leaving, I was like, oh, my God, I love this city. I love everything about it. I had a great time. And then I see all them kids outside, and I'm like, the only time I see that energy in Boston, Mike Bivens, Biv 10, Big 3. Shout out to Michael Bivens, man. Yes. Yeah. He was actually on the Christmas train with the mayor last year with my son. So that was a cool thing to meet him. While we were in Vegas, I was kind of hurt. Like, yeah, I wanted to be... FaceTime, though. <laughs> I got the <to> FaceTime, <laughs> yeah. though. Yeah. Yeah. But for me, when I look at Boston, it's my home. Everywhere that I've been, I walked. I was on the bus before I had a car. So whatever I experienced, whatever I seen, it's me. It's Boston. It's my stomping ground. So when it came to owning and I'm doing something to miss the Boston, it's like, you know how we could turn this up? You know what we could do? Seriously. Yeah. Because it's like, although, and let's be honest, Boston has that crab in the bucket syndrome with certain topics. I mean, I see DJs talking about it. I see people with the music awards. Why does it have to be that way with the sports aspect? We have stuff outside. There are people outside that want it. There are kids that are hungry, but they don't have the outlet. Who am I to hold you back from not finding this option, a spot? And who am I not to tell you to come here? So what did you do? What, what was some of the details that you did? Because it sounds like to me that you wanted to see change, right? Yeah. So like, what was some of your, ask, what was some of your specifics in, de in detail that you've done to say, you know what? I don't see this happening in semi-pro sports, semi-pro football. Let me bring this to the table. What, what are some of your ideals, ideologies that you did bring to the table? Well, first and foremost, God, number one. You know what? I, I just got humbled. <laughs> I just got humbled. Great answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, so that's why he messed with my chain. So to give you a quick background, this is the Last Supper story. So I have like a couple of these chains. Oh, please show the blame. <laughs> show the blame. Hold on, wait. Here you go. So it's the Last Supper chain. So basically, this is my favorite story in the Bible because at the time, I was going through a lot. And I noticed that certain people that were sitting at my table weren't meant to be at my table. I didn't have boundaries. So the moment that I started creating boundaries, I started seeing how they were. Now, whether or not they liked the boundaries, that's on them. But I noticed that and I said, you know what? This is my last supper season. I'm about to show y'all that I already knew who the Judas was, but let me show you how <laughs> by next season, when I hop on that field, Y'all can crucify me all you want. I'm coming back three days later. It's all right. I'll see you there. So the changes that I implemented inside a semi -pro, like semi pro was, I'm gonna start letting these young guys get a chance. I don't care how you come, no matter how you want to come, whatever it is, come outside. We actually the first year that we owned, we had a player, and I'm not gonna say names, but he came, he played, he was great, good safety, I believe, correct? Mm -hmm. Great safety had issues, he was at a game. P.O. was like, oh, you're not where you're supposed to be. It wasn't What's P.O.? Probation officer? Probation, Probation officer. You got an ankle monitor. And so with- so he was playing with the ankle monitor? Yes. 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 Really? Yes. yes. I think he got hit and it went Damn. off. And it went off. Oh, I ain't never heard of that before. This, <laughs> hey, it's semi-pro. <laughs> you never know what you're going to get. Never. No shit. Oh. Never. Never. So, so, all right, all right. So you, let, let, let's just take a quick- so when y'all saw that, right? I mean, let's just be honest, because I'm sure that, yo, they want to know, like, yo, you got a whole football uniform on, pads and all, and you got a motherfucking ankle bracelet? Let's be honest. Yeah. It's, let's be honest. It's semi-pro, so 
You, I mean, come we on. We kind of seen it all. <laughs> yeah. But that was a situation where I seen people with ankle monitors on, but his happened to go off. I ain't never seen this. He actually shit like took that. a hit. Yep. And the guy went for his legs and hit the ankle monitor. So yeah. I'm not as sure. He must have got hit hard. It kind of went off. Yeah. And it was a situation where they was like, oh, you're not where you're supposed to be. Yep. Blase, blase. Got arrested yep. or had to turn himself in. Something crazy like that. Yep. I'm not sure the details. We end up going to court for the young man because the young man was like, they don't believe I was playing football. Mm-hmm. And what's the, one of the things that bothered us was the DA was like, send, let's send him to a program. Oh, they got football in the program up there. He can play while he's locked up. Which is a lie. We was like, what the fuck? What did you just say? Mm-hmm. And- but they don't realize that with the change that could be implemented with a community, unity, all the things that could be possible if people have just believe in the vision or just see the growth and change, guys like that could come outside and have something that they're doing. Exactly. They could have an outlet, which is what I honestly believe, and I tell him all the time, black men don't always have an outlet. That's the biggest fight that we see is their mental health. Everything else under the sun there. That's a big deal right there, the mental health. The mental health. How are we going to sit here and say that there is a football program in prison when there's a whole safe program implemented in my neighborhood at the time? We were right stationed at Madison Park. How are you going to sit here and say there's something for him inside of a facility when at the end of the day he was getting his time out? trying to relax himself, get his mind together, but also play a game, something that he loves and have, even if it's three hours of enjoyment, he's still on his P's and Q's. It is what it is in their mind. But who am I not to change the demographic and give them boys an option? This is where we guess we change football semi-pro. Let's be honest. A lot of the issues with semi-pro is certain teams have certain favorite players. Favoritism. I'm, a, I'm the type of coach where... If you come to practice, you pay your dues, you're going to play. If you want them players, oh, I don't need to practice. Be obviously, let's be honest. I don't. This is a stimulus in my pro. This is the, 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 what the people think about it. Oh, I'm him, so I don't have to go to practice. Mm-hmm. On our team, you're not going to play. You got to learn these plays. You got to show responsibility. You got to show up to practice, even if you're working. You already made a commitment. Said you want to play, so here's your commitment that you need to meet. If you don't meet them. Meet them commitments under my eyes and my standards. I don't care who you is. You're not stepping on my field. That's just to show that, hey, before you earn something, you need to work for something. Don't just because I was this good player in high school, or I was a good player at this other team three years ago, you might not fit into the system that we're trying to run. So for us, intermittent that no matter who you are, if you come to practice, you're going to play over somebody who don't come to practice, no matter how good they are. And people need to get that out their head. This is this this is this, the problem with semi pro. So once we've seen that problem, this is what we do. And it's not about you don't. And here's the, our first season. It, for me, success wasn't about winning or losing. Mm-hmm. I was watching people for if they aren't if they met somebody that they can be cool with how they hung out because at the end of the day the problem is and we don't talk about this let's talk on this issue is as men we get depressed sometimes I agree we don't have friends that some people might not have the friend or have a group of people they can actually go to without them trying to talk about their business yeah. well, a positive out outlet yeah. yeah put them out there or get on Facebook or they fighting oh I'm gonna tell your business cause you I don't like you no if you tell me something like, nigga that stays with me right. I ain't finna go out there and this and that talk about you or put your business out there what you do or who you screwing with or what your private life is let's have that conversation yeah. so I measure success on how is everybody hanging out I measure success on even though we losing how y'all doing behind me, the sideline? You know, it's, you know each other. You know, you know it's funny that you said that too, because like when you go to the combines, right? NBA, right. whatever, soccer, hockey, all of it, right? Mm-hmm. WNBA now. You go to the combines. They think that you know it's a thing to where it's all about how good you are as an athlete. Yes, that's a little bit of it, but the real aspect of it is 
what your life is like. Who do you hang around? Like, how do they find out all that information and they're coming to you asking you, who's Jake? Who's Tammy? Or who's whoever? You know, and it's like, how did you know? Or where was you on, you know, February, whatever, and you got caught up in that? And this, these are information that wasn't in the newspaper. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, how did you know? How did you find so, out? Here's how you measure, for me, how you measure successful semi-protein. Even if you lose, how's morale in that chat room? Exactly. How's morale after the game? That's why when we played, when we was doing stuff at Madison, we stayed until I think one time the cops showed up. And they was like, what are y'all doing back here? We barbecuing and chilling out. We just had a football game. They was like, all right, cool, and left. Mm -hmm. No problem. Not no drama. Search nobody. Not, no drama. Respect that. We had a couple games where we had the mayor come out one game, flip a coin. Everybody was like, oh, my God, how'd y'all do that? She did that. You know what I'm saying? That how, how, how was that like for you to be? Because obviously you both are smart, but she's the brains with the, techni the technical. So like, how were you able to like even get the mayor and to establish a relationship for her to come? <laughs> yeah. Like for real. Y'all better be taking notes out there. <laughs> No, actually, don't take notes. I, <laughs> yeah, they could keep that. They ain't taking no notes. <laughs> well, first and foremost, um, I have a tight family unit. So my father, he worked on the Deval Patrick campaign. Oh, shout worked, out to Deval Patrick. Yeah. Yes, um, Liz Warren campaign. And then Mayor Wu's campaign. Shout out to Mayor Wu, too. Yes. So basically, he would always go campaigning out. And when he would start canvassing and stuff like that, he would take my son. And so from that point, my son started getting into it. And at that point, it was like, oh, my God, I love him. We need to go get him on the Christmas train. It'd be so cool. And then I said, you know what? I want her to also get the aspect of what we as a family, my son, my husband, myself, what we're trying to do, which is the biggest issue happening currently right now. The young generation is outside. And they're not having an outlet. What are they they're doing? They're not winning. They're not winning. They're sitting around and they, hate to say it, they're killing each other. You hear it all the time. You've seen it on the news, even just last week. Come see the positive side of what you could have. And all you had to do was catch the 23, the 15, the 22, get off at the police station and walk. You know what I'm saying? Like, you could have something. And we will help you. So when I requested the mayor... Got a little quick text. Hey, hi, how you doing, boo? Hey, can you come and do this for me? I want you to be able to see what I'm trying to put into the community to which I voted for you to be here for, you know? So you utilize that opportunity. Oh, yeah, I utilized it. And that's what you have to do. Seize the moment. Because if you don't, then who will? See, okay, take notes on that part. <laughs> because, honestly, a lot of you guys and, and women, when I say guys, I mean people in general, but a lot of you people out there have the resources, but you're not utilizing them the right way. And basically, that's what she's saying. That's what they both are saying. And, you know, please, like, drop, keep dropping them gems because, you know, obviously, this is a thing to where people are understanding how you guys are able to come together, together, right, and then create something while bringing others to together and you guys are flourishing you guys are doing big things and this is where i want to get into talking about the upcoming turkey bowl now you guys need to understand this november weekend thanksgiving weekend the turkey sorry the weekend before the turkey bowl come on please talk about it i got you go ahead you start this off so first it's gonna be dope <laughs> So first and foremost, um, shout out to my son Malik Wright Flacco. He shout out, big shout out. Mm -hmm. He said on one of our forums, leak forums, what are we doing for Thanksgiving? I want a game. So growing up for me, my grandmother she lives right on Marcella Street. So right down the street from Marcella Park. Every year it would be the old guys versus the younger guys, and they going out playing football. And that would be like the highlight of Thanksgiving because everybody up in that kitchen is hot, and I, I can't do all that. I'm sorry. It got to be one person, one man under the sun. So you would watch that. It would be lively. Wait a minute. So you don't, you don't like making Thanksgiving dinner? I'm not doing it if my grandma is still here, thank Jesus. Oh, man. Yo, high five. I don't do that shit either. But, I, <laughs> but I'll be out there playing with y'all. Shit. <laughs> so I was like, you know what? He got a point. So why can't I give my family history that 
unfortunately, those have passed. My cousin Justin, he passed a few years before this happened. And something to me was like, yeah, let's do it. So first annual, quick and a flip, got a field, bam. I want to give you guys that outlet to be able to show your families exactly what you do. Because everybody off holiday weekends. Everybody, no excuses. No excuses. They all no outside. <laughs> and I'm like, since this is my newfound family and my newfound venture, thanks to him, let me give y'all something back to put into the community. So Thanksgiving, they got their jerseys. And last year, we did Team Death Row versus Team Rough Riders. So <laughs> wait, 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 wait. We're going re to rewind that. Say that part again. So we, we have an old school vibe. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows if you ride with me, I don't play none of that new shit in my car, right, in my right, truck. It's right. either R&B, right. 90s rap, right. early 2000s. All that new shoe, gun in my purse, <laughs> all that. No, no. If you wear skinny jeans and pink, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm not doing it. So... We decided, she decided, okay, let's do let's do a 90s thing. I'm do I wanna do Team Death Row. They call me Big Shug. That's dope. So I thought about it, okay, I could do no limit. I'm from the South. Oh, I could do no limit soldiers. I could do this uniform. And I think that's the year that um uh, uh DMX died. So I was like, oh, wait a minute, let's do Team Rough Riders. I I'm a, I love DMX. So that's how that came about. So we decided to leave it up to the fans. She put her jerseys out there, hey, y'all vote on this. I've, I'm, I put my jerseys out there. We asked, some, we asked our designers to send us three different jerseys, designs. She put hers out there. Hers was 90, a 90 style, red and black with the smoke, Team Death Row. That's how hers came about. Mine was simple, gray, black and gray, fade into each other with the white, simple. And that's how we went with the first year. Mm -hmm. So it, that's how we just, it was a basically, huh, let's think about something. What's this theme? You know what I'm saying? This year, we wanted to, actually play a New York team or Connecticut team but it didn't work out it didn't pan out mm -hmm. so we decided to go with each other let's play each other again so y'all gotta understand we're both competitive yep if y'all didn't see the drive, the, la the live earlier we are competitive when it comes to this football stuff yep. she has her her vision I have mine so we decided this year to go against each other now Bailey being a city of champions this is her city she came up with, because we were going to play New York first and Connecticut, the black jerseys with the um, what's the, the water tower on 90, 95. That's what the first jerseys, the black with the water tower, the Celtics, they're the champions. Then we couldn't find another team to play for. So I was like, hey, just do mine. Mm -hmm. So I'll just I'll play against you again, Team Tex. Mm -hmm. So I was like, what jerseys? I was like, hey, here's my two colors. I think I went and bought a hat. And I was wearing a hat. It was a Boston hat, and she liked it. And she was like, and I could see her looking at me. I'm like, what the hell are you looking at? Like, you being weird. Mad weird. Yeah. We was driving somewhere, and she was like, hmm. She took a picture of the hat and told the guy, design the jerseys off of this. Mm -hmm. And the rest is history. The rest, you got the black jerseys, you got the white jerseys. Here we are, Turkey Bowl, the second annual one. We got more players this year, so... <laughs> We're slow, and we're doing this now. We, she got a whole coach, her own coaching staff, and we got very competitive. And we're slowly oh, 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 taking oh, it. We, we we definitely gotta we 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 definitely gotta talk about the the coaching staff now. What I want to do real quick though, I do want to uh, take a I want to jump into you know the the severeness the sever, uh, I can't even say the word right, but um, the severity is that what you call it of how important this upcoming Turkey Bowl is. You know what I'm saying? Like, at the end of the day, like, let's just be honest. You know, with this Turkey Bowl, there's players coming out. There's coaches coming out. There's the public coming out. There's the fans coming out. Like, this is a serious ordeal. And I just want to go into a little bit about, you know, some of the people that will be there, you know, from the coaching staff to the fans to also I want to get into also the aspects of marketing and making sure the right people understand this. Michelle Wu, everybody that supports this movement, like really understand because it's about a month, a month left to go. So we want to make sure that the right people understand, come out and support. Like, you know, what are, what are some of you guys doing to help to get the word out to market this? That's on me. So first of all, I'm on TikTok. <laughs> she made it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Hey, go ahead, mama. <laughs> 
Well, oh shit! <laughs> I need to startle you, but <laughs> first of all, I'm making TikToks. Mm. I'm on Twitter and I'm posting it. I'm hitting every Boston celebrity from the jump down to the up down. We outside. You got Jason Tatum. I've been been in his inbox. Like, look, come out to this. I want everybody outside because I want Boston to understand that I'm coming in and I'm running and I'm hot and I'm not stopping until I make sure that y'all get it. There's not just the Celtics champions. There's the Boston Chargers. I want you all to see me, not just for how I look, because I look great, but for what I do, because <laughs> y'all ain't never seen no black queen do this. <laughs> they wasn't Especially ready. in the football world, let's be honest. Hey, hey now see that. Let's be honest. Now, now see, now, now, now that's what I'm talking about, because now, right, understanding that, you know, this game is a, this, this it's also a charity game, right? It's a charity bowl. So at the end of the day, can you name some of the players that's also going to be playing in it that you know is going to come in and just be crazy effective? Like, it's going to be a game is a must, a must, how do you say, a must see. A, a must see. There you go. There you got go. you on somebody. The whole draft, the whole thing earlier, Jay Menace from the Admirals and now owner of the Cardinals. Mm. Jay Menace, mm. number one. Person Team text. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Well, he snatched him. You know what I'm saying? He thought he could just snatch these. Like, he do. don't go home to me. He got to hear me the whole that's ride home. Hold. That, hey, don't matter. That's what you're supposed to do. You put it in there. We just waited for the right time. We knew who we wanted. We just waited. That's what you're supposed to do. Don't get mad at me. I, I love this competitiveness. Look at this. Man. And this man, like, he snatched my purse like I was just walking through Dudley. I swear to God. You don't see how he just took my craziest pick. That it was number one under the sun. I'm telling you. This is what I be saying. But that is the one that people are looking to see. Okay, now, right? Going off of him. Now, some of the coaching staff. Like, now, you guys obviously are going against each other, right? Yep. So <laughs> he made that nose, right? So now, like, oh, oh, oh look at him. <laughs> so, so now, like, give me an example of some of your favorite coaches that's going to be coaching your team. First and foremost, Bunny, who got us to the couch, no Jaguar right. What are we saying? Can you, can you, can you, can you, can you, can you, we all need to, we all need to take a pause for the cause. Can you please say that name again? Coach Bunny. William Bunny motherfucking Jefferson. <laughs> she did that. I did that one. She did that one. <laughs> we <laughs> outside. <laughs> It don't matter. We wait, still the wait, 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 champion. Wait, 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 wait. Now, 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 my question to you is, is, who do you have to match him? Oh, I got Eric Nobody. Lott. My boy, my boy Eric Lott. <laughs> wait, I got Eric, I got Eric Nobody. <laughs> oh, Why? shit. Why? No, live and direct. Spousal coming to Why is she talking at who won last year? She mad. Let's keep, let's talk about that. Let's talk about who already won. Don't wait. He may have won the game, but I won in life because they're still looking to see my new fur coat this year. They ain't checking for his new cowboy hat. <laughs> oh, you got to go to... Why you hey. Go? Um, <laughs> all right. Yo, this is getting serious. <laughs> now you see what I'm saying. Y'all need to come to the bowl. Come to the turkey bowl. All right. This is what we going to do. Yeah, do it. We gonna win. Yeah, do it. What? Do you know where we're going with this? <laughs> I mean, honestly, let's let let's let's just put it out there. You got it last season. Got it last season. You gunning for it this season. You got William Bunny Jefferson. Mm -hmm. You got Tyrone Flemings. Mm -hmm. Come on, who else you got? Man, that's they ain't getting no more secrets. <laughs> I will say this, Rob Baker, he has definitely been a significant help to this whole thing. But let me tell you something. The moment he told me Coach Bunny and Ty was coming on, I said, oh, from the Burt? Oh, in the video? Oh, you have, like, it's just the true Bostonian flavor that people don't get. You know what I'm saying? He could never understand that. See, let, let's put this out there. All right, all right, let me say this. I don't know, man. Well, She's just my I home now, too. So, because of her, so Boston's my home now, too. We're just trying to put Boston and Massachusetts football on the map. Of course. Let's be honest. When you go, when we go, because I play all over. So, we do this thing every year when we first started Chargers where I know a guy named Rob, who's Team Colorado, who's also on the board of the Semi-Pro Hall of Fame. And they do this thing every year in Vegas. A national team, Team Colorado, they're in charge of. So, our first couple of years, our first year at the Chargers, we told them, if you represent us good, 
we will send you to put you in this game. Put your name, get try to get your name on a roster. Vegas is a big deal for most football players. It is a big deal. In December. Um, a lot of players don't understand that out here. And when we first tried to do this, they told us we were fake. Let's be honest. Told me I was lying. Oh, it ain't that big of a thing, this and that. The first year, we sent seven players out there. They did their thing. Um, last year, we had a total of 15 players out there. 16. 16 players out there. I don't know all the names, but we had 16 people from Boston and Massachusetts go out there and play in all three games. There was a morning game. Um, I know afternoon game and the afternoon evening game. game. The evening game. See, because what he ain't saying is I was sitting there holding the stuff on the sideline the whole games yeah, yeah. in the cold. So it wasn't that cold till nighttime. It's Vegas. <laughs> Look, child, it was cold. Um, <laughs> so when we did that. You know, a year before that, actually, we had teamed up with Colorado. Team Colorado, we went to New York. It was Team Boston, Team Colorado versus the Harlem Gators to start off Hall of Fame weekend. So I'm going to be 100% honest. I probably shouldn't say this shit, but I'm going to say it. It irritates me when we've been doing this and somebody just do something with one player and they brag about it. That's a shot. I ain't going to sit here and sugarcoat this shit. Um, it is what it is. Yeah. We've been doing this, sending players to play and represent themselves and try to get them to the next level. There's more levels after semi-pro. If they're serious about it, we'll help you. But if you're bullshitting about it and I don't think you're putting the work in, I'm not going to put my name on the line and my reputation on the line for somebody who's also bullshitting. Understandable. Mm -hmm. And let's be honest. This, the last three weeks is the state of football, especially in Massachusetts, ain't been the best one because of the fights and the shit that's going on with the TikToks and the videos, so it ain't been the best reputation. I understand. Let me say this: I understand people fighting on the field, but I mean that happens in the NFL. I, I, but we got these hotheads now, these young kids. I hate to say it like that. And you got Facebook who don't make it no better because they get on no. They talking that. Back in the day when me and Bunny was playing, we didn't have Facebook. We had MySpace. We didn't really have that because it wasn't out that much then. We just played between a whistle. I can't sit there and be like. Oh, what you did was wrong because I've been known to be a hothead too. I'm going to be honest. Let's keep it 100. I got arrested on the field before. I've been known to do some dumb shit. I swung on some people before. I fought some people. But people do shit on camera now. They get caught doing stuff. It, it, you know why? Because it's the power of the internet. But, yeah. what, but what, I, what, I, what I do want to focus on too, though, is you know understanding the players that do support in a positive way you know i want to talk about as well the fans that come out and support because i know a lot of fans that they're not uh what's that called they they're not interested in the bullshit the drama some are but that's not what this is about no you guys are you guys are so positive it's crazy right and one thing I want to ask you guys too is like you know being able and you guys juggling so much you juggling everything on the field you juggling everything off the field how are you guys able to come together and to level that out because that's hard and then do it as a couple at that well let me say this that goes into his point that he was just making mm -hmm. like I was saying before revitalizing the brotherhood is so essential right now let me tell you, semi-pro football is literally being called 37U like we're Pop Warner because of the things that is being said. So how do we level it out personally? He handles the on-field situation, training guys up to be what they need to become in their certain positions. He's trained people up to be able to even do NFL practices. We have a player right now, am I correct? Yep. And so as far as me in the behind field, I deal with the in-office. You want to shout them out? <laughs> well, first of all, Denarius, Denarius you know, Campbell. Point stands, that's about it. That's <laughs> yeah. but now, like, is he, well, never mind, I'll leave that. <laughs> so, <laughs> as far as the, like, behind the scenes, which is something that i am always been about, with the player I was saying that got arrested, one, two, three, four, everybody in the chat, all y'all, we're going up to the courthouse. We need to support him. They need to understand that he has people behind him. For different leagues that didn't have fields for championship games or all-star games, whether they want to say I did it or not for whatever reason, the receipts are there. I provide that opportunity when it's necessary, especially in less than 48-hour intervals, may I add. My time stamp is always going to be correct. Putting on bowl games, assisting with anything else that people need, talking to commissioners when they've wanted me on leagues and th different things like that. That's what I bring to the table. I've always told people I will help change and revitalize the brotherhood 
they just don't always believe. And that's called the politics of the game. Now, I, I definitely want to, you know, because I, I want to get back into the Turkey Bowl, right? And I want to, like, for everyone that wants to, you know, purchase tickets, that wants to find out more information, uh, how can they get a hold of you guys now to want to sponsor, to, you know, all of one, all the wonderful things to make sure that this happens and it area. happens successfully? The Boston Charger Facebook page. Hey, That's Boston Charger is what it is, y'all. Like, like, how can they reach out to you, you know, all the public, the fans and things like that, and, you know, just to be able to speak to you and say, hey, you you know what I want in from those that want to sponsor or maybe they just want a ticket or both like how can they get a hold of you guys okay so first and foremost they can add me on Facebook at Bailey Brewer I'm the only person with my name spelled with two E's secondly they can add the Boston Chargers page you'll see them right here Yep. Right here. this is the logo of the profile picture for the Boston Chargers page. You, you know you know what can you can you hold that up so they can see that so Look at that. Matter of fact, let me see that. Here, you hold this. <laughs> oh. Here you go. This is it, y'all. So y'all can understand what's going on. The Boston Charge is right there, baby. Can you hold that, Mike? Boston Charge is right there. Take a look at that. That's real business right there. That's what y'all going to see. And they're going to be the new what? Turkey Bowl champions. <laughs> Well, I was always a champion, but. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's what it is, man. And my last question to you guys is, you know, um, through it all, when the turkey bowl's over, right, and it's all said and done, where do you guys see the Boston Chargers in the next five years? Oh, man. Ooh. So we'll keep it 100. We are, we're only going to stay a spring team. Not We're not going summer. That's fine. Um, we have too many players that play for other teams, and – out of respect, and this is where I, my Southern hospitality, you say hospitality come in, I don't want to step on nobody's toes and make enemies. That's not what I'm here to do. Mm -hmm. So for players who don't feel like they get enough playing time on the summer team, you want to get more experiences, this is where you come to. Mm -hmm. This is the team that, hey, if you put the work in, you'll see the result on the field. I'm not about, oh, just because your name is so-and-so, you're from another team, but you don't want to come to practice and show up on your own Saturdays. This is not the team for you. But if you want to build chemistry with your teammates, come to practice, learn a new offense or defense, learn some real tech um, uh, stuff at your position, techniques, footwork, things like that, and actually put in the work, then this is where you're going to be. What you get with – I always love football because what you put into the game is exactly what you get out of it. If you don't put the work in, don't expect to see nothing out of it because we have built the Boston Chargers up – Somebody else thought of it, but we have almost built it from the ground up. And because of the negative light right now, we're building up again. Mm -hmm. But we want everybody to come out. We are really going to have fun. And if you think about playing football or we just want to try, please tune into the Boston Chargers page because after Turkey Bowl is the whole thing with Vegas. We'll be going for a week. We'll be out there. We'll be at the Hall of Fame dinner for those who get inducted this year. We'll be at the ECFL banquet. Mm -hmm. um, she's up for an award. Really? Yeah. Let's talk. We're, we're, real quick, what's the award? I Honestly, I just got sent a nomination saying I was getting an award and being nominated, possibly. That's dope. But you know what? Even if you don't, you did. You know what I'm saying? Because I have one more question. I know we were supposed to end it, but I got one more question. Like, give me in three words the Boston Chargers. Oh, I'm a woman of many words. <laughs> Three words. You could put them in a sentence. Glorious, life-changing, stealth. Ooh, y'all heard what she said. Y'all know what it is. And once again, I want to give a big shout out to, because I don't want to leave them out. I want to give a big shout out to Rob, everybody that came, that was in the building, that made it happen. Big shout out, man, to Tyrone Flemings. Big shout out to William Bunny Jefferson. Big shout out to everybody that's involved. And we need to get more people involved. All you sponsors, all you ticket buyers, all you promoters, let's get this thing done with the turkey super bowl because i mean excuse me the turkey bowl because this is about to go down real talk remember not just anybody can come up here but it's your boy lenny dime magazine you already know what it is baby we out of here